today on Divorce Court. I'm here because I love Alicia. I really want to be with her, but we are having some communication issues that is just making it really challenging and frustrating for me. The problem between Steven and I is intimacy issues, and he has an anger issue as well. I don't like the feeling of rejection, and the fact that I'm getting rejected by her is frustrating, painful. Steven, I want you to be more patient with me in intimate relations. I want the judge to tell Alicia how to improve our intimacy on her part. Alicia, I want you to know that no matter what happens, I want to be with you, I want to marry you, but we really need to work on this. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Alicia Martinez and Stephen Christopher James. Ms. Martinez and Mr. James, you have been together for three years, engaged for two. This is a before your vows. You wanted me to give my best opinion on the state of your union. You've given me your marriage license with permission <laughs> to tear it up. Should I believe that the union is ill-advised? You filled, filled out my compatibility test, which I thought had some interesting things in it. But before we get to any of that, Ms. Martinez, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and what's concerning you about a possible trip to the altar? Well, like you said, we've been together for three years and engaged for two, but we don't necessarily get a lot of time to ourselves, and we wish that we had more of that. Um, roughly, we get to see each other around two to three times a week, and in that time, it's only a couple of hours why is that? Is it work? Do you live far apart? Well, yeah. The commute between us can be up to like 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> That's nothing! Um, That's next door in California, 45 minutes. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, there's, there's a lot of traffic also, and um, I'm the sole um, caregiver of my, an elderly relative mm -hmm. who is showing signs of dementia. And I'm responsible for um, everything for her. And um, it takes... Do you work as well? Yes. I work as a librarian at an elementary school. And mm -hmm. then sometimes I can work overtime there for dedication to the school. Okay. Mr. James, do you concur with her that one of your major problems is the inability to see each other? You just don't have the time. We really don't have the time, no. Our schedules conflict because of um, our jobs. And um, What do again, you do? I'm a massage therapist. Okay. It's a very strenuous job, so when I get off, normally I just want to go home and just rest, relax, but mm -hmm. we actually have a date night that we uh, commit to every week. So when mm -hmm. I get off, I go straight to her, and it takes about an hour simply because of traffic. You right. Know? So I'm already tired, and when we go on date nights, um, it's fun, it's good. We go out, we eat, we go to a movie sometimes, you know, but because she's living with a family member, I'm also living with a family member who am I paying rent to. Uh -huh. We don't really get the alone time that I would like to have. Right. Say. Are there other issues that evolve from the fact that you don't see each other very often? Well, since I'm a caregiver for her, mm -hmm. I tend to feel like a lot of guilt leaving as well because um, she depends upon me for everything. Mm -hmm. And um, it can be very stressful. Also, I don't like driving too much, um, but a lot of times, always on my mind is just going to be taking care of her. Mm -hmm. Let me ask this, Mr. James, you, you said in your paperwork to me that intimacy was a real issue, and it wasn't simply a function of lack of time. Why don't you tell me what you think the problem is in that area? To be honest with you, I feel that the problem is that she's just uncomfortable with the whole idea of intimacy, not so much with me, but um, basically she'll become hesitant anytime we're alone. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I feel. Right. So um, she's told me that she wants me to voice what I want. And the thing is, like, I'm not used to that. I'm not used to saying, hey, I want to do this, I want to do that. I'm used to, I'm in the mood, you're in the mood, let's go. You know, like, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm used to. So it's challenging, it's frustrating, simply because we already don't get enough time together. Right. So when we do get alone time, it becomes You would like to make good use of it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> uh, Ms. Martinez, what is your response to his comments in that area? Well, for one, I wasn't really raised in that kind of setting. Like, I wasn't really taught all Comfortable stuff. and open with your sexuality. Yeah. Some people are, some people aren't. I'm more conservative, I like mm -hmm. privacy. Um, well, most women like privacy, I think, that's <laughs> the sex part. Well, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm old, so I could be wrong. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Mr. James. You say you're not used to voicing your desires. 
if you see that you have a woman who's not comfortable with her sexuality, wouldn't it behoove you, in order to get what you want, to start doing that which has not, you're not accustomed to? I have started voicing, but the thing is, um, she likes to make excuses, honestly. Like, for instance, we went out to dinner one time, mm -hmm. and it was on my side of town. Mm -hmm. So um, during dinner, I told her, hey, you know, you, before I take you home, let's stop by my place, you know? Mm -hmm. And I get that my place is also a challenge. Again, I live with a, a relative, right. you know? And I don't have my own room. I live in a loft, mm -hmm. you know? So we don't exactly get the privacy that we like, <laughs> per se. But clearly, this particular <laughs> relative, she has a strict rule where nobody enters a loft if I have company over. So mm -hmm. when I mentioned that we can stop by my place um, just to do what I wanted to do, she makes the excuse. She goes, I'm, I'm too full to have sex. It's a new one. <laughs> uh, uh, Ms. Martinez, what is your take on that particular situation? I'll make excuses, but a lot of times I just don't feel comfortable in this loft because you can hear anything that happens from downstairs. And that makes me feel very self-conscious. Right. And I... You're I, already not comfortable with the whole idea of it, and then you're exposed, more or less, yeah. because of, of the circumstances. Y'all ever get a motel room? <laughs> we have, yeah. And even then, it's still a challenge. The first time we got a motel, um, she said that she needed to digest the food that, she eat, that we were eating, and... Don't that, feed her no more! You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think you should stop, stop that altogether. <laughs> <laughs> the other excuse that she made was, she said it was too hot in the room. Uh -huh. And um, I, I understand that. Right. You know? But even then, I feel that I shouldn't have to say everything that I want, you know? Like, we're already laying in bed together, like, and I want to make a move. I feel, I don't feel comfortable making the move because I feel like she's going to push me off mm -hmm. or make some sort of... And Is just... that, does that commonly occur when you do make a move? Commonly, yeah. Commonly. I got, I got you. We need to talk about this some more, but before we do, I want to change gears for a moment and talk about your concerns about his anger. He became frustrated and he said some very hurtful things, such as he said that if he couldn't get what he needed, then he would probably look towards other women. And um, that, that hurt a, hurt a lot. Ms. Martinez, you said something to me that I found very interesting and compelling. You say you believe he has inordinate anger, especially with respect to women. Why don't you tell me why you believe that's the case? For instance, um, due to the lack of intimacy that we have, he became frustrated and angry, and he let it build up. And it ended up where he, he was just overly frustrated with me, and he said some very hurtful things. Such as? He said that if he couldn't get what he needed, then he would probably look towards other women. And um, that, that hurt a, hurt a lot. And um, I already have confidence issues mm -hmm. and um, it made me feel very much like I was in the wrong. Like what's wrong with me that mm -hmm. I can't make him happy? Mr. James, could you give me your version of that event? Uh, to be honest with you, Judge, like, when I get angry, I don't really remember what mm -hmm. I said, right. per se. I personally would never go out and look for another woman while I'm in a relationship, mm -hmm. you know? But the thing about my anger is I do tend to say and do things. I can get pretty destructive when I get mm -hmm. angry. So because of that, I learned on my own to just kind of just contain my anger. And I know that's bad, but mm -hmm. I don't have a healthy way of letting it out. So with all the frustration going on in this relationship where I'm not getting my needs met, then it just kind of comes out and I'll say things. I don't want to hurt her, but I don't know how else to go about it. You seem to think that it's directed towards women in general. You had an example about a grocery cart. Explain to me why you think he specifically has anger directed at women. The thing that happened with the grocery cart was um, me, Steven, and um, a female relative of mine were um, getting a few things for a trip. And he became very critical of the things that my relative was picking up. Mm -hmm. um, they started bickering back and forth, nitpicking at each other. Finally, he just kind of went quiet. And then at the end, we were leaving the grocery store and I was pushing the cart to the conveyor belt. 
and then out of frustration, he was trying to get through that narrow aisle and he pushes the cart and it ended up hitting me in the hand and crunching a few of my fingers. Mr. James, your, your version of that. Um, the thing was, this particular family relative, we don't exactly get along. You know, she does very much get on my nerves. So Alicia, <laughs> <laughs> so Alicia, she kept running off to go get things, leaving me alone with this relative. So that's why we were bickering. Right, like, right. I didn't want to go shopping to begin with. I was already in a bad mood. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> but when we got to the uh, the register, um, I forget what the family relative said, but it, it kind of set me off a little bit, right. and I wasn't paying attention to where she was. So I did push the cart. It did hurt her. Yeah. Fingers. But but it wasn't. But, but it was intentional. It, it wasn't. That, that's just two examples. Are you jumping to? Conclusions about his anger towards women, like he has an issue with women, because I don't really see that. He has an issue with his girlfriend about sex and location. He has an issue with this relative that you don't like. But that doesn't read to me a woman issue. What makes you think it's a woman issue? He has a lot of um, resentment towards a, a female relative of his. Uh -huh. It comes from her judgment of his lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, not showing appreciation for the things that he's done in his mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. not supporting him. Mm -hmm. Do you believe you have issues with women? I believe I do. Um, the relative that I grew up with, she just never, I don't remember her telling me that she's proud of me for mm -hmm. anything that I've done. She was always pushing me to do what she wants me to do with my I, life. It, and, yeah. I, and I got that, but do you think that has transferred into... I believe so. You, you, you believe, that's very insightful. A lot of people can't see that, and, I, and I'm glad you have the ability to do that. And I, I want to talk to you about that as well. I do, however, need to talk to you about your compatibility test. And then I want, this is a before your vow, so I want to know why, despite these troubles, you still believe that you want to marry one another. We went to um, a church event his female relative had invited me to. Mm -hmm. And he didn't tell me that we had a dress formally for it. I didn't know. And everyone was kind of giving me the stink eye for not being very dressed formally. Can a relationship thrive when sex drives are polar opposites? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Your compatibility test demonstrated a couple of things. Number one was you're a Wiccan and you're a Christian. Do you find that distressing or is that not something that has become an issue because you aren't married yet or aren't thinking about having children yet? Me, personally, I don't find it distressing at all simply because mm -hmm. we're not, like, hardcore serious into these it, religions. Right. You know? So, like, I don't you even... Just affiliate, yeah, not basically. necessarily practice. Yeah. Is, is, is that accurate? Um, pretty much, though sometimes I, I think that they would probably like it if I was a Christian for him. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, we went to um, a church event that his female relative had invited me to. Mm -hmm. And first off, it already got awkward because he, he didn't tell me that we had a dress formally for it. I didn't know. Was it a black church? Yes. yes. Or black? Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, they're always looking good in the black church. If it's a black church, you could go fancy and get relaxed because they stay in forever. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> well, I thought it was just going to be like a tea party. Right. But it ended up being very heavy religious sermons. Mm -hmm. And everyone was already kind of giving me the stink eye for not being very Got dressed you. formally. Got so. you. Got you. This is a before your vows. You two say, despite your differences, you're very much in love. So, Ms. Martinez, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to ask you to give me a 30-second sales job on why Mr. James is the man from you. I don't want any negativity, no nasty, no but if, only if, if he could, I don't like. <laughs> it's got to be all love. Go. I absolutely love his smile. I love his animation. I love how much fun he has with everything that we do in life. Um, also, he's very, very handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done, Mr. James. She did a great job describing why she cares for you. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to tell me why she is the woman of your dreams. Go. 
the number one thing she does for me that I've actually never had before, she pushes me to be a better person. And I struggle with being better on my own because I hold on to the past a lot. I hold on to what's wrong with me. And she reminds me why I'm such an amazing person. And I feel that I can go to her for just about anything, really. Like, she tries so hard to be supportive. She really does. And I see that. And I appreciate it. Like, even though this is a very different relationship, she's doing, really, she's doing a good job at making right. me feel that this is perfect. Like, she's a woman I have to marry. I can't see myself living without her. She's the woman I have to marry. I love that. <laughs> so very romantic. I got a couple things I want to say to you. I want to talk to you about who you are and how everybody has to be the best that they are before they get into a relationship with somebody else at all. Because if you come in with all the nicks and stuff and you don't know what they are and you're not ready to fix them, it's difficult to become a, 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 a solid twosome. So I'm going to take a few moments and tell me what I think you need to do and whether or not you're ready to get married. What would you do if your fiancé had different religious beliefs than you? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I enjoy you two, and let me tell you why. Number one, you're rational. You're reasonable. In here, anyway. There's some things going on out there. Not quite right, but there. <laughs> Number two, there's no ratchetness going on. There's no cheating. It, there's nothing about social media and video and the Instagram. They, 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 none of that. And it's so refreshing, and I just love that about the two of you. You both got jobs, and you're taking care of people. I just think that's fantastic, a, a, a solid basis. Now, here's what I want to say. In this day and age, there are a great number of resources to deal with the problems that you have. And often what we do is we say, I have this problem, I am this way, I know this issue occurred, and I came by it legit. And so since it's a legit reason, you feel that's how you feel. But my thing is, no matter how disappointing, negative, destructive anyone in your life has been, to continue to suffer from that destructive behavior is allowing them to continue to destroy you. So if you need to go see somebody about how you feel about women or whomever, you need to do that because that frees you. And if you, I would deal with your comfort with sexuality. There's, there are people who deal with that and I would like you to enjoy something that can be very, very enjoyable and also help cement your relationship together. Uh, so you need to deal with your issues of anger and you need to deal with the issues of, uh, 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 of your sexual... On your own. Come to each other as whole and as strong and as capable, because you're fabulous people. And the only thing more tragic than, than, than two people who are not meant for each other getting married is two people who were meant for each other to get married, but do it too soon and can't pull it off. What I want you to do, so I'm just not... I'm not gonna tear this this uh, marriage license, I'm, I'm just going to slide it over here and fold it here and let this sucker expire. But what I want you to do is do the best you can do to be the best you you can be so then you could be the best two that you could be. You understand? You're understand. a wonderful couple. Good luck to both of you. This matter is adjourned. Judge Lynn said you guys should kind of wait a little bit longer to, uh, to tie the knot. I feel it's a good idea, you know, like now that this has been brought out and that we've talked about it, um, I feel more confident that this can be worked out, that this marriage can work. I think we do need to work on ourselves a little bit more before we actually tie the knot, but I wouldn't want to marry anyone else.